This video is sponsored by Capture One. With unmatched color processing, lightning fast performance, and incredible tools for editing and organizing your photos, Capture One offers creatives like you ultimate creative control. Click the link in the description to download a free trial of Capture One and find out for yourself just how powerful it is. And when you're ready to buy, use the code DUNNADIDIT to get 10% off your new annual plan. In a recent video, we learned the ins and outs of the HSL tool or basic color editing tool inside Capture One and just how powerful it can be. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can go watch that first or just keep watching. You do you. But there are actually two more tools inside this same tool tab that give you even more flexibility and even more control when you're color grading your photos. These are called the Advanced Color Editor and the Skin Tone Tool. And in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into how they work and how you can be using them to step up the color grading on your photos. Secure the cup and let's get into it. All right, first things first, let's take a look at the advanced color editor in Capture One. If you're not seeing this, you can right click anywhere in your tools and hit add tool and go to color editor and then it'll pop up. And then we wanna click on the advanced tab. Now the photo that we're looking at here is actually the complete color spectrum. And then from top to bottom, it actually goes from saturated to desaturated as well. This will just make it a little bit easier to explain certain parts of the tool. The first thing that we need to do is select this little eyedropper. They call it the pick color correction tool and then we can click on any color in our photo that we want to edit. Now we can see the selection that we made represented by this little dot here inside the color wheel. And if we want to change what that main selection is, we can just move this dot around. But surrounding our main selection, we've actually got more from the left to the right, as well as from the inside of the circle to the outside of the circle. And those all kind of mean different things that we'll get to in a second. At the bottom of our color editor tool, there's a button that says view selected color range. And what this is going to do is isolate our selection. Everything else is gonna become black and white so we can just see what selection we've made to work with. And now we can fine tune that selection by either dragging the lines to include other colors. You can see as I expand it, it's including more orange and yellow, or as I contract it, it is taking away more of the green. You can also move the entire selection by clicking on this little line here and moving that. So we can see the selection moving throughout the different parts of the spectrum. And then we can also choose the level of saturation that is being selected by changing how close we are to the center. So the center of the circle being fully desaturated, fully black and white, and then the edge of the circle being fully saturated. So if I want less of the really saturated stuff, I can move my point down and I can take away some of that selection that's up at the top. You see all the really saturated stuff has gone away now in our selection. And then speaking of saturation, down at the bottom of our tool, there's actually a button to select the full saturation range. If we click that, it'll make it so that our selection spans from fully desaturated all the way to saturated. This is something that comes up pretty regularly. You just wanna select all of a color regardless of how saturated or desaturated it is. And then we've also got the smoothness slider and this is going to fade it into the colors next to it so that we've got a more smooth selection. And when we go to actually mess around with the colors that we've selected, it's not going to be harsh in the edits that we do. So a bit of a more practical example here, if I go in and I select my skin tone on this photo and then I hit view selected color range, you'll see that it's also selecting part of the jacket because they both fall in that orange area. Area. And if I were to expand that saturation, you can see all of the jacket is in there. So the way that we can get rid of the jacket in the selection, knowing that it's more saturated than my skin, is I can pull back the selection of saturation. And then if we look at my nose, which was a little bit more pink from climbing a mountain, I can move that over and get a little bit more of the pink skin into that selection. So now I have a reasonable selection on just my skin tone, but let's say we wanted to select everything but that skin tone. There's actually a button down here that will invert your selection. So it'll invert and select everything except the area that you've decided. So now you can see that my skin tone has been fully desaturated, but everything else is color. So that means that's what's going to be affected once we start making changes. Okay, so resetting that tool, I'm actually going to make a selection of just the jacket. 
So once we have our selection made, there are several things that we can do. The first being what we saw in the last video with hue, saturation, and lightness, or HSL. So underneath the color wheel, we can see our hue. If I push that to the left, it's gonna make it more red. If I push it to the right, it's gonna make it more yellow. I can also change the saturation to make it more or less intense. And then I can also change the lightness of it. So I can make it a little bit darker if I want. So you can see I went from having kind of a pale orange jacket to having this vibrant dark red jacket. At the bottom of this tool tab, you can actually see the before and after of where you made your original point and then what you've done to it after you've changed the hue, saturation, and lightness here. And then right here, you can see the different changes as well. So we've got minus 30 on hue, 64.7 saturation, minus 35 on lightness. One really cool thing that you can do in the advanced color editor that you couldn't do in the basic or HSL tab is that you can make a masked selection based on your color selection. So if I wanted to make that selection of the jacket, but I didn't want to be limited to just hue, saturation, and lightness, I could go up here into the top right corner, click these three dots, and click create masked layer from selection. It takes a second, and then it makes an extra layer here. And if I turn on my mask, we can see where it's masked in. If we go to grayscale mask, we can see it a little bit better. And just like any other mask, now we could refine this. So you can see there's a little bit on the ear and some random stuff coming down here in the ground and on the trees. So we could always get our eraser tool and just go in and paint out the stuff that we don't want. That's a pretty rough job, but you get the idea. So I've got way more control now than just what was available inside the advanced color editor. But let's delete that for a second, go back to the advanced color editor, and we've got even more options available to us. We're not actually just stuck to using one color selection. We can go in and use this dropper, and every time we click, it'll make a new selection all in in this list here, and it shows you all the individual changes that you've made. You can select and modify each one just by clicking on it. Now, if I make a change there or there, so you can see all the different changes from all the different color selections that you've made. We can have up to 25 in each instance of the color editor tool. So if you have more layers, you could have 25 more of them if you want. And they can overlap to whatever extent that you want as well, so that if you mess with something in red that has a little bit of orange in it, and then you also have an orange selection, they will compound on top of each other. The possibilities are just ridiculous with this tool. If you want to see what each of your individual edits are doing, you can actually toggle this on and off and it'll show you kind of a before and after. And then at the very bottom here, we've got our minus, so we can delete any that we don't want anymore. If we hit this plus button at the bottom, it's going to add in a selection that encompasses the entire spectrum, similar to what I called the all selection in the HSL panel. And if we adjust the hue, you can see the outside ring moves and it shows you how much it's moving all of the colors away from the inside ring, which kind of shows you the before. So as we move it to the left, the ring spins to the left. As we move it to the right, the ring spins to the right. We can also increase overall saturation or decrease it. Again, just like in the HSL panel, lightness does nothing because you've already got other controls that would do that for you. Okay, so let's see this in action. I'm gonna make a new filled layer. And first things first, what I'm gonna do is add an all adjustment so that I can increase the saturation overall. Then I'm gonna use the eyedropper to go start making selections. So I wanna select the blue of the sky, the green of these trees, my skin tone, and let's do the blue of this water here. Blue of the sky, let's shift it over towards teal a little bit, desaturate it just a hair, bring down the brightness so it's a little bit deeper. And I've got the trees and I want to modify that selection a little bit. So that includes a little bit more just before it starts to get into the water, I think. So we're gonna add a little bit of saturation, move the hue over to a bit more of an orangey green. You bring down the lightness a little bit. And on my skin tones, I click the select all saturation, see what it does. It might be a little bit too saturated and a little bit on the yellowy side. My skin's a little bit pinker than that. Something like that. Maybe actually bring up the lightness a little bit. A little more saturation back in there. Once we brought up the lightness, it felt a little less saturated, so 
kind of make up for that a little bit. There we go. And finally, we had the water. This is an interesting one because when I selected it, it also got a lot of the sky in there. So I'm actually just gonna shift this over a little bit and see if I can get just the water. We're gonna make that a little bit more blue over to the right, saturate it a little bit. So we've got before, and after using only the advanced color tool, definitely made a huge difference. A lot more vibrant colors in there and I got to really isolate the parts that I wanted to affect. And the best part is that it was relatively easy too. Okay, so that's the advanced color editor, but we're not done yet. We're gonna move on to one of my favorite tools, the skin tone tool. So first things first, I'm gonna make a new layer and just call it skin tone. And for now, I'm just gonna fill mask. So that's going to affect the entire photo. And I'm just hitting M to see where my mask is. Now, probably the most basic and obvious way that I can think of to use the skin tone tool is to fix variations in people's skin tone color. So for example, looking at Pete here, we had been out hiking all day and it was cold. So he's got some yellow parts, his kind of orangey freckles, and then he's got some red going on on his nose from being out in the cold all day. So we're gonna go over to the color editor. We're gonna click on skin tone and it looks pretty similar to the advanced tab and we're actually gonna start the same way. There's a little eyedropper here and what we can do is go over to his skin tone and pick again, pretty similar layout. So we've got our color wheel up here. We've got our before and after down at the bottom. Our selection is shown by this little dot that we can move around and we can click view selected color range to refine what we're going to be affecting. So you'll notice that right off the bat, we've got his skin tone in there and we've got the pink nose and everything, but we've also got his sweater in there and we've got the fur on his hood. Might even be a little bit of the jacket in there. So we'll just rein this in a little bit. I think that's about as good as we're gonna get the selection without losing some of the stuff that we actually do want to affect. Now, the other thing that we can do here, our selection is kind of where this triangle is, but where we want to move things to is where that dot is. So right now it maybe is a little bit dark and a little bit on the pink side. So maybe we'll move it over a little bit more on the orange side. And then on this tool, which is a little bit different from the advanced tool, we've got a lightness slider on the left-hand side and we've got a saturation slider on the right-hand side. So I can actually increase the lightness of that a little bit, just like that. And now that color down at the bottom there, that's kind of what I'm going for. And we can always change this later if we want. Turning off view selected color range so we can see the whole thing. And now that we've got our selection, we can actually make small adjustments to the hue, saturation, and lightness, just like we did in the advanced tab. But they are smaller adjustments than we were able to make in that other tab. So for example, hue only goes up to five where it goes up to 30 in the advanced tab. Saturation only goes up to 30 instead of 200. And lightness only goes up to 10 instead of 100. But what really makes the skin tone tool different and special is the uniformity section. So again, we're seeing hue, saturation, and lightness under uniformity. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna bring everything that's within our selection closer to the desired point. So the higher I bring my hue uniformity, the more uniform all of the hues within that selection are going to be. So if I crank this all the way up, you'll see that his face goes all to this specific color. If I bring up the saturation all the way, his face is going to be all saturated to the same same amount. And then if I bring up the lightness all the way, you can see that it brings them all to the same desired lightness of that selection that I made. Now, one thing to note is that it only goes so far with this. So if you've got a super shadowy area and you crank up the lightness, it's not gonna bring it all the way necessarily because we're still seeing darker parts and lighter parts on his face, but it's going to bring them closer in. Now, let's be a little bit more reasonable with this. And just if we zoom in a little bit here and kind of keeping an eye on his nose, as we bring this up, it brings it to a more uniform kind of color, maybe similar with saturation. Lightness is nice. We can bring it up just a little bit. So we've got before and after. Zooming in here, noticing that the sweater is a nice red and when we changed it, it's now this kind of orange. If we wanted to get that red back, all we have to do is clear our mask and then we can just paint in this effect where we want it, just like any other kind of mask. So I hit B to bring up my brush. I'm gonna bring my brush size down a little bit. By hitting M, I can see where I'm painting and I can paint in just over his skin where I want it. So now before 
and after it's only affecting the skin tones. One thing that you wanna be careful of when you're using this tool is the lip color. Our lips are generally a little bit more pink than the rest of our skin tone, so it looks a little bit weird. So what we can do there is actually grab our eraser tool, bring down the size a little bit, and bring down the flow quite a bit, and we can just kind of paint out some of the area on the lips a little bit so that they're not affected as much. So that's with it painted all the way in. That's with it a little bit backed off. So there's before and after. So nice uniform kind of skin tone. But like I said before, the skin tone tool doesn't have to be used just to affect your skin tones. There are other things that you can do with it as well. For example, let's say I wanted to make the sky a more similar color to the water in this photo. I can go to my skin tone tool, make a selection of the water, view selected color range, make sure that the sky is included in my selection. You see the dot is way over here, but I've made my selection so it includes the sky. And then as I move up the hue uniformity, it's gonna make the sky a closer color to the river. Same thing with saturation and lightness. I wasn't super careful with my selection, so it's getting a bunch of the clouds in there too. But now I've got a more uniform color between my blues and my photo, instead of having this kind of purpley blue and then this kind of tealy blue. Or maybe we wanna do kind of a summer to fall transformation. I can go in here and select some green, make sure it's getting all of the green in the photo. Then what I'll do is crank up the hue uniformity, move it over a little bit towards that orange, and then I'm gonna just move this dot, my selection dot, over to that side. You even push the selection over so I can get it a little more orange. So now we went from bright green summer look to an orangey kind of fall look, but we left the red alone in there. This definitely isn't the only way that you can do that, but it is one way and it was pretty quick and easy to do. So that is the advanced color editor and skin tone tool inside Capture One, some of the most powerful tools that you can use to manipulate colors in your photos. But as always, I wanna hear from you. Are these tools that you're already using? Do you have any cool tricks that you like to do with them? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And on your way down there, hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Huge thank you to Capture One for sponsoring this video. Make sure to head down to the description and click the link to start your free trial today and you can mess around with these tools yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.